Good afternoon, Lace Jumpin' I'm John, this is Media True Dirt, and welcome back to Starfield. Where last time, we did our first proper mission for the Crimson Fleet, and uh, it turns out this entire faction questline is about hunting down a lost pirate treasure. So, uh, okay, now that's rather cocking exciting. And even better, it sounds like yes, we're kicking off today by doing our heist on a luxury space liner, though. Uh, before we go and do that, here we go, Niva wants to have a chat, so right, she might be about to, you know, give me some additional information about the heist I'm about to pull. Alright, look, I've been lining up a score with that asshole Rokoff on the Siren of the Stars for months. I'm not about to let a payday slip through my fingers, so guess what? You're gonna finish the job for me. Okay, so... Right, I've got one job from Delgado. She's got something for me too, though. Okay, you know, treat this like a proper job. I'm willing to do this, but if I'm the one actually on the ground doing the dangerous bit, I want a cut too. Of course you'll get a cut. That's how everything works around here. Why would this be any different? Rokov's been tipping me off about some kind of bullshit charity event that the Siren of the Stars is hosting. At the event... They're gonna give away something called the Earth Savior Award, which is worth tens of thousands of credits. So it's simple. While you're on the siren, swiping those gal bait credentials, I want you to grab that award and bring it to me. Oh, well, this just sounds delightful. So, uh, right, let's see how you respond to a really bad joke. Look, you can make all the jokes and excuses you want. But if you don't come back with the ES award, I'm gonna deduct it from your pay. Either way, I get my money. How much you walk away with is in your own hands. Got it? I suppose it is up to you to decide whether it is worth it. Okay, so why do you get the feeling that yes, the um, Earth Savior award or what have you, it's probably going to someone who really bloody deserves it and I'm gonna feel really bad about stealing it from them. And okay, we're not going straight to the cruise ship instead. Uh, right, the UC wants, you know, a status update before we do. Now, last time I went there, they did give me a warning because uh, I did kind of kill someone. And I'm not really supposed to be doing murder. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've not killed anyone since. So okay, they're going to be delighted. Okay, Commander, Captain Aria reporting for duty, and as you can clearly see, there is no blood on my hands whatsoever today. You're welcome. You're back. So how did it go? Surprisingly well, and now I've got to go find a pirate treasure. This is brilliant. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. Okay, what is it with you in every meeting we have? You're always telling me I can't kill people. Just once, let me have a little bit of fun, Commander. Okay, debrief completed. We can finally make our way to the space cruise liner. And, uh, okay, by the looks of it, gosh darn it, I was hoping you would be located in, you know, a... Olympus, where my house is, because that would just, you know, very much prove I live in a lovely neighborhood, but no, the sister system, Ar and I, and uh, last time I was here, I don't remember this system being particularly crowded, so uh, right, this will be why the system was being, you know, uh, set aside for a plot thing. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, it's not that attractive as a ship, is it? Like, you know, I would have expected a space cruise liner to be a bit, you know, uh, Gordia, damn it. Right, before we board, uh, we're going on to, you know, a, a fancy vessel, etc, etc, though. That's true. I don't have a cover story. And also, do I, like, have tickets or anything? Normally, you need tickets to go on a cruise ship, so... Uh, oh, I feel like I've not planned this heist particularly well. Okay, bare minimum, do not show up wearing, you know, pirate gear. That would definitely potentially give the game away. Here we go, my Ryujin business suit. Brilliant. Now at least we dress the part. So, right. On board, Andreji, you're with me. Let's see what we can do. I have things I wish to discuss with you. When you have time. 
Okay, go on. We'll do that now, because otherwise you're going to be bloody annoying me about this every single time we walk through a door. It has been a relief to be honest with you about my past. I appreciate your willingness to listen. But talking about this, remembering all those years, has brought back some unsettling memories. Oh, here we go. Tragic backstory. Let's see what you've got. I have told you that I spent many years coordinating with smugglers along the edges of the settled systems. There were men and women I worked alongside closely. And over time, I established relationships. They were not of the promised, but I considered them friends. Okay. The promised. Presumably, therefore, yeah, that'll be how snake people refer to themselves uh, and each other. And uh, I'm guessing from the way you phrase that, yeah, snake people aren't really supposed to socialize uh, outside of other snake people. You must understand. I was raised to believe that those who do not follow the Great Serpent do not matter. For they are lost. Their fate is fixed and grim. And yet here were these men and women with hopes and dreams, delights and aversions. It felt like a small betrayal of my people, of House Varun, but I cared for my friends. And then I lost them. Okay. So by the sounds of it, yes, like religiously, she does believe in the Great Serpent, but culturally... She's not so keen on the whole isolationism versus everybody else thing. Gotcha. It was so sudden. We had met on a remote planet to transfer cargo. And zealots appeared in force. Seemingly out of nowhere. There was barely time to react. So many were cut down immediately. I believe my years of training saved me. Got me moving when others faltered. I retreated to my ship immediately. But I left them all behind. Aaron Bascom and Jada Wong. They were my friends and I abandoned them. And in the years since, I have never looked for them. Okay, so... Yes, indeed. Like, was there a reason you wouldn't have, you know, just nosed in and checked whether they were alive or dead at the bare minimum? I told myself it's because I never had the time, but... In truth, I was scared of what I'd find. Okay, so... By any chance, like, you know, this conversation or maybe a couple down the line, do you want to go find them or something? Thank you. That is... <sighs> I'm sorry, I am not used to someone being so considerate on my behalf. I am not sure where they might be now, but I believe we should begin the search in Aquila City. That is where I last saw Aaron Bascom. Alright, so Andreja is now- Oh, Okay, sorry I forgot about this. Yes, when you begin the appropriate mission, you now can't dismiss that companion until it's done. So, uh, right, we're not getting on that right this second, okay, Andreja? We're doing our own thing. But we will get to it pretty soon, I promise. Also, I can't help but notice that, yes, I was being slightly shuffled around during that conversation. I think I was being pushed by a sanitation mini boss. Well, that's just adorable. Okay, I may not have, like, you know, a, a cover story or tickets or whatnot, but don't forget, Rokov. He's the guy who, yes, Neva was planning this mission with. So, uh, logically, if I need, like, you know, uh, IDs, a special outfit, etc., etc., he's gonna be the one who can give it to me, right? About time you showed up. All right, I wanna know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when... Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own. Delgado orders me to help you out. Uh, yes, indeed. It turns out, unfortunately for you, this ship's also got something way more important on it. But don't you worry, Neva has ordered me to also take care of this business. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. 
Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? Okay, I'm not convinced I should tell Rokoff anything. Like, his business with Neva was related to the award. This guy has got nothing to do with the legacy. And the more people that know, the more potential leaks there are. So, all you need to know is that that's who we're targeting. Okay, you do not need to know why. You're getting paid anyway, so I don't know why you're being so nosy about this. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. Okay, so as a member of the Crimson Fleet, I can say a Crimson Fleety thing, and uh, I mean, I can ask Delgado, but I can't make that decision. Like, I'm a rock. I'm not in a position to approve that one way or the other. That's a disturbing way to put it, but I suppose that's the best offer I'm gonna get, so I'll take it. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. Oh no. Is shooting everyone an option? Alternately shooting ourselves to avoid it? Okay, so uh, I didn't bring my dinner jacket. No! No, I did! I'm wearing my best jacket right now! I saw this bloody coming! So... Okay. You want me to just go and take care of uh, that, and... Uh, I'm guessing there's a good reason we can't just go and break into his cabin and whatnot. Yeah, tell me about the gala. Like, you know, give me all the information you can. The event's a complete sham. Bunch of rich snobs getting together and throwing a party for themselves. These people couldn't give a damn about Tehran Preservation or any other charity for that matter. Okay, I hope that's true. Because if so, it's going to make me feel a lot less bad about stealing their trophy out from under them. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. Okay, so plan A by the sounds of it is, yeah, dig up some dirt and then blackmail him. Now, I wonder if, yes, just because that's your plan, it's the only plan. Like, if I had high enough security, etc., etc., whether I could maybe just break into his cabin and rob the place. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway... I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. Okay, once again, don't kill anyone. Got it, though. Right, that's one half of the mission. Don't forget the other half. Where's this bloody trophy? Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook, and you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. Okay, so bare minimum, he knows the right people for me to speak to. Got it. Right, so let's mosey on upstairs and see what we can find, like, you know, outside of the staff area and into the ballroom proper. Captain Rokoff said you're allowed in any of the crew-specific areas. Just don't touch anything, please. Oh, that would explain a lot. Right, apparently Rokoff's the captain of this ship. I did not realise that. Okay, now that does make a lot more sense how he knows everything about everything. And can just, you know, walk his friends in through the staff area without anyone asking questions. Oh, here we go. I think I found, you know, the threshold from below decks to the passenger facing bit. Alright, now all of a sudden, everything's looking a fair bit nicer. Beautiful. And before we get to the ballroom itself, okay. This is precisely what I was thinking might be a decent alternative. There's a door locked here. Cabin number four. 
and uh, passenger, Sheila Holbrook. Okay. The person we're supposed to be speaking to about the award. So, right. Cabin access pass. That's what we need to find. Same deal just around the corner. So, right. Cabin number five. Uh, that's Larry. So, okay. With enough security, we could break in and maybe have a bit of a poke around, you know, uh, their luggage, their personal correspondence, etc, etc. But, unfortunately, that we cannot do. Oh, but here we go. Right, poking around the back area just around the corner from reception. The purser. Restricted area. No admittance. What abilities are... Okay. There's unfortunately someone in here. And if I step through this door... Okay. Still being marked. It's like, you know, green and as I should be. If the rest Safe room computer, right. I imagine there is an incredible amount I'm going to work under out. the assumption something, maybe the award, this is where it's going to be. The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage-resistant vacuum-proof plating. In the unlikely event, our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered. The safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. In the even more unlikely event, this ship is destroyed. We can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. Did the game just suggest that potentially blowing up this cruise liner in order to, like, you know, pick the stuff out of the wreckage might be an option? I'm not sure whether it just did or not, okay? Keep that in mind as, like, you know, a, a plan C. Gotcha. Okay, but something may be interesting. Yes, Rokov, who we've not decided whether, you know, we're going to welcome back into the pirates, make sure he gets paid, or alternatively, cut him out of the deal entirely. Let's have a chat to you about the captain. I'm sorry. It's against Trident policy to discuss our personal feelings towards a fellow crewmate. Oh, come on, Murata. You know you want to. I don't want to lose my job. Why should I tell you? Because, as you can see, I'm wearing an excellent snazzy jacket. So, don't worry about it. Nothing will connect this back to you. I mean, it might be okay. All right, and then, number two. Glad you're coming round to my point of view, Murata. I'm trying to be reasonable here. And then finally... I know you would love to help me. All right, but you didn't hear this from me. Do you understand? I don't want to lose my job. I like Captain Rokov, but I think he's mixed up with some very dangerous people. I was bringing some paperwork to his quarters one day, and I found a slate with a message he received from someone named Delgado. That would normally be fine, but the message mentions the Crimson Fleet as in pirates. Can you believe it? If you want to grab it, the slate should still be in his quarters. Somewhere. Okay. That's true. The way he was talking to me, he didn't have any contact with Delgado at all. So, right, we may want to, like, you know, just go and check out that slate. And speaking of the safe room, right, Sheila Holbrook. She's the key to everything. Here we go, downstairs in the crew quarters, but still, you know, a very, very nice room indeed. Uh, this must be Rokoff's room, so... Uh, right, gun ourselves. Yep, Captain Rokoff's computer. Just make sure no one can see anything while we just crack that open. Okay, so by the sounds of it, yes, Rokoff's done a good job somehow conning his way into being captain of a Trident vessel and... Uh, He's making a lot of money off it. So, uh, right, cargo just mysteriously goes missing. With a particular focus on uh, booze and furnishings, marvellous. And crew members have occasionally died in mysterious accidents. Potentially people who, you know, uh, might have figured out what was going on. Gotcha. Rokoff is most definitely into some dodgy stuff here. And here we go, uh, the slate the purser just mentioned. So... Uh, 
Rokoff. Once again, I'm refusing your request to rejoin. We're not a membership club here, Rokoff. This is the goddamn Crimson Fleet. You don't apply, you try out, and if neither doesn't put a hole in your skull, you get picked. That's how it worked. You already went through it once. You had your chance, and you blew it. So, right. This is marked as evidence. That is now evidence I can give to Toft back on the Vigilance, meaning she's now got something she can use to arrest and hold Rokoff. Gotcha. And he's also got a safe, but right, we're not even close to breaking into that. So, okay. Security would be very useful on this boat, but don't worry about it. Let you know. Get back to the ballroom proper. We need to get ourselves, yeah, a keycard from somewhere or another. Oh, now this is more bloody like it. And, uh, right, hang about. You're Sheila. So, right, we know where your cabin is. Uh, and we know that we also need your key to get into, uh, yeah, the purser's vault right at the back of the ship. Let's not worry about that for now. Like, for the time being, okay. Step the first, the game did say, speak to various society patrons uh, to see what we can get about Yas Larry, who is located here in the VIP section, which looks very well guarded, but um, the captain said I'm allowed to go wherever I want, so that doesn't apply to me. So uh, that's Larry right there. Do not speak to him just yet. We're not dealing with that instead. Uh, okay, pick someone I like the look of. Uh, and start chatting to see if we can dig up some dirt. And uh, how about you? You're wearing that lovely outfit from Neon I like so much. So, before we get into the dirt, yes, let's learn what we can about this mysterious award and indeed, uh, the organization. <sighs> Is this about that feature SSNN ran a few years ago? I can assure you, this is a legitimate charity organization. Okay. So I'm guessing that, yes, there may have been accusations. This is just like, you know, a, a great big tax dodge or something. And uh, tell me about the Earth Savior Awards. Ah, it's for the society's high rollers. If you don't have more than eight figures in your account, I wouldn't even bother going after the award. Okay, this certainly sounds remarkably dodgy. I don't feel bad about robbing these guys in the slightest. So uh, tell me about Larry up there. Dombrowski is married to some poor woman that he constantly leaves behind in New Atlantis when he goes on his business trips. Right, let's just go around the room, see if anyone's got anything, you know, a, a bit more juicy. He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. Oh, now we're getting into some better blackmail material. We heard previously, yes, he doesn't really bring his wife on these cruisers. Uh, and now we might know why. Brilliant. And I think that person you mentioned, I know precisely where she's located. So, okay, straight back to, uh, yes, the suites here. I saw you, uh, yes, down over here somewhere. One of the two rooms we didn't look at, I think, was yours. So, uh, right there. Brilliant. Sorry, do I know you? Indeed you don't, but, um, how about me and you have a lovely chat, Claudia? Okay, wait, are you seriously, uh, are you trying to pick me up? Look, uh, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone, and my partner doesn't like competition. He gets very jealous. Okay, the question is, oh, maybe I should chat to your partner's wife instead then. His wife? Uh, oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? One room key, please. That will be magnificent. So, okay. Something incriminating. Right, I just wanted the room key, but... Don't worry about the gal bank credentials. We'll worry about that in a moment. How about, yes, I just give you a handful of caps and you give me something I can bloody use. You're willing to pay me to give you dirt on Larry? <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought I'd end up on the short end of the deal. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. 
Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. I do not understand. Your anger is focused on Mr. Dombrowski, but clearly the failure of this plan rests on you as well. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. Right, the three of you had a good thing going on stealing money, but he got greedy and wanted to steal it even bloody more. Gotcha. So, right, I need something I can use against him. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. And unfortunately, yes, because I've not even taken the basic pickpocketing perk, there's no way I can get, you know, a, a key off her personal, so... Andreja, I'm gonna be honest, that's more suspicious than just standing there normally. And yes, I'm pretty sure I did see around the corner. Here we go. Yep, Gabriel Vera. So... Okay, with expert tanking, this mission would be over a lot bloody faster. Let's go find that chap here. Hello. You here for the charity event? No, actually. Blackmail. So, let's talk about Galbank. Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. We both know exactly who you are. All right, I've already got some evidence, some testimony from Claudia. Potentially that could be enough to make life a very difficult for you, buddy. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware, I am the authorities. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? So that there, that hasn't worked out particularly well, unfortunately. Okay, let's try, you know, visiting the captain and seeing what we could do with him, potentially. I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that imbecile's gonna demand that you be arrested. Okay, so, yes, he wasn't as shaken as I was hoping he might be, despite the fact I now know all about his embezzlement scheme. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. But it's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Okay, you're the captain. Give me the key to his room. Okay, just give me a key. I'll go check everything in there. Though that's true. Some form of, say, I don't know, fire alarm to get everyone back to their cabins or whatnot. That might work, though. Actually, that's true. In the case of a fire alarm in space, where do you go? You can't, like, you know, line up outside. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. All right, that'll do the job, and uh, I think I know precisely where we need to go for that. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sandin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start backing. Things are getting hot around here, and... Won't be long before Trident figures out you had hell. So, either we can, yes, do a bit of sneaking around, or alternatively... Well, actually, okay, for now we're allowed to be here, no trouble. We can either get this done, or maybe cost Rokoff some money by functionally bribing the chief engineer. Oh, and Rokoff, you sly dog, right. There's a novice locked door right behind the entry area here and hidden away up just between the servers or whatever. Right. Stolen artwork. 
black market antiquities. Okay, well, this is just better and better. Okay. Engineering proper. Now we've actually, you know, broken into the backstage area, etc., etc. What do we need to do to... Oh, right. I'm guessing without your help, we're not bloody going anyway. Got it. Okay, my good friend. I just need to very quickly, just for a moment, tamper with the life supports. Oh, uh, sorry. That area's off limits. No exceptions. So, okay. A grand or indeed... Uh, you know what? Why would I use my money when the captain can use his? So, uh, yes indeed. Gambling debt wiped out. Oh, really? Well, that changes things quite a bit. Tell you what. I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away. Okay, this entire boat is incredibly dodgy. Right, he wanders off for a nice little stroll. You just turn your back on me. Just to dig through here. And in particular, right, all doors will be unlocked the moment the lockdown begins. Brilliant, though. Okay, before we actually push the button, we should go see Sheila. Just in case this alarm panics her in some capacity. Because that could mess up, you know, getting the awards. Here we go, Sheila. I have heard amazing things about your 100% legitimate charity that's not just a tax dodge. Yes, I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. So, okay, let's learn a bit more about, you know, you, the award, etc, etc. Well, the Earth Savior Award is one of a kind. The Blue Diamonds alone are irreplaceable. Since we can't produce a new award every year, it's instead passed from one recipient to the next. I supervise the transfer and make certain that there's ample security during transport and at the destination. So, yes indeed, you must be nervous about having that in your room. In my cabin? Oh, please. Why would I do something so foolish? I'll have you know that the award is locked inside the master safe, located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. All right, now that, that I figured might be the case, yes. Now, like she was just saying, she may not have, like, you know, the award inside her cabin, but... Given we know the key we need, uh, the whole bridge claim ID, that might be in her cabin. So, okay, Murata, me and you, we're already friends, aren't we? Like, you know, we like each other. You've been spilling the beans to me about Rokoff. Okay, the only option I've got that's new is uh, I'd like to peek at the Earth Savior Awards. Oh, she's not going to say yes, but fine. Let's see if, you know, the exact wording she uses when she refuses gives me any information. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? So, all right, we know about the ID already. The question is, where are we going to get that from precisely? Oh, according to the quest marker, we're going back to Sheila. I'm not convinced she's going to say yes to this. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? I mean, you're not wrong. That is a wild thing for me to suggest. So, okay. Probably, before we do anything, let me just, you know, do a bit of Paramore so we've got a better chance of succeeding with this. Okay, Sheila. I'm wearing a nice suit. I've done some Paramore. Let's make this happen. And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? Okay, need to get up to six. Not too bad, really. What's the worst that could happen? I hope I can trust you. Okay, Sheila, I'm not leaving until you tell me what I want to know. We'll see who gets tired of this first. Okay, we just lost a green there, so... I could either go for, yeah, a chain of greens, or... A more dangerous yellow. I'm going to try and chain, yeah, the easiest check going. So, uh, 
Come on, Sheila. We don't need to have a problem here, do we? Sorry, but I can't. Oh, this is utterly preposterous. I'm not giving you anything. Okay. Right. I mean, understandable, really. Like, why on earth would you? Okay, we need to find an alternative approach. Ah, hang about. I think I know what plan B might be, because that's downstairs. Rokoff, old buddy, old pal. I need, yes, some other way to access that room. The only way you're going to get the award is by using Sheila's claim ID. But she's not going to just hand it over. Here, give her this. I'm certain it'll help. Oh, and Rokoff, you little star. So, right. He's got proof, or rather, yes, like a slate that points to previous existing proof, a message from Sheila acknowledging that society funds were being diverted into her personal account. And she sorted that out by, yes, just transferring yet more society money into the blackmailer's account as well. So, okay, I've got dirt on Sheila now. You know what, buddy? When the time comes to make a decision, I'm not cutting you out of this job, all right? I'm going to recommend you be welcomed back into the fleets. Oh, Sheila. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila. It sure would be a shame if everybody found out about your massively corrupt nest egg in Paradiso. Oh, my goodness. How did you know about that? There's no need to make a scene. If you're here to steal the award, there's nothing I can really do about that, is there? Here, take it. So, back over to the purser's office, now with the legitimate ID in a hand. And now all of a sudden, oh, right, start cracking open the door. No and trouble, Murata. I've got the hands. correct ID and I everything. Like Brilliant. And in the safe, oh, right, there's the award. And on top of that, money too. Magnificent. And tragically, we can't even have a proper look at it because it's sealed away in a case. Dear oh flippin' dear. But yes, by the sounds of it, maybe a giant crown or something. Here we go, back to the room of buttons where I don't know what they do. So right, just reset this. Maybe push this as well. And then set this to seven. Brilliant, I see the word danger there. May I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. That sounds about right. Okay, let's get over to the cabin so we can take advantage of this situation. There we go. The party is ruined. Magnificent. Much nicer in here now. Plenty of room. Okay, I appreciate that Andreja actually, like, you know, likes the ballroom better, having cleared out all the people who were in it. That makes me like you a lot more, Andreja. Brilliant. Okay, step one, yes. Gabriel, we now need to have a lovely chat with you, buddy. I was wondering if you were the cause of the shipwide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. Oh, I don't trust you with the secret about sister because uh, we know you're dodgy. All right, you've been funneling money to yourself as part of this conspiracy with uh, the other two. So 100% you're not getting anything from me. But I'm guessing you're willing to toss Larry under the bus. I always took him for a fool, but I can't believe he's stupid enough to have gotten mixed up with the Crimson Fleet. Still, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over any evidence? I mean, because otherwise I'm going to murder you, but no, 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 don't actually do that. Just like, you know, uh, threaten him and... Uh, yes, indeed. Claudia did say he'd already been robbing you of your fair share for like, you know, a certain definition of a fair share, given the entire thing was a scam. Claudia said that. You sure? Damn it. That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk away with a fortune. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't want to end up on the Crimson Fleet shit list. But if I give you that information and it, it falls into the wrong hands, I'll end up in jail. This is a lose-lose situation for me. Two and a half grand is nothing. Like, it's a really flimsy bribe, but... Come on, buddy. You knew the guy was dodgy. Why on earth did you trust him with the numbers? 
Dombrowski had the authorization to wipe out records on Galbank's system without raising any red flags. I let Claudia talk me into that. She said she had him wrapped around her finger. All Apparently, she was wrong. Okay, for two and a half grand, whatever. Hopefully, this makes you a bit more chatty. At least I walk away with something. All right, you have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. I cannot deny, these individuals are very cheap to bribe. Oh, and before we go see Larry, just in case we need a tiny bit more blackmail material, I'll write here on, yes, Claudia's beds. My darling Claudia, love Larry. Good, 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 good. Yet more evidence. Okay, in which case, Larry, you are now alone, and I am sitting on giant piles of evidence that you are a cheating, embezzling bastard. Let's talk business. Well, well. You must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. Okay. Someone else who seems rather unflappable and also is a bit more ahead of the curve than I was expecting. He already knows precisely what I've been doing, so... Okay. I'm gonna be honest, Larry. I'm a pirate, I'm a bastard, we're not really here to negotiate. <laughs> Au contraire, my misguided friend. There's a bargain that needs to be hammered out, and you will listen to the facts before we proceed. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank. The means and the methods perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my Galbank credentials. Will there be much more of this? My head is starting to hurt. Okay. I mean, I don't know the fact he's being so smug about it, but he's not actually wrong. So, you know what? Hand them over. You've got a deal. Splendid. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day. Okay, quick as you like, back to the ship because we're not quite done yet, of course. This was just to access the bank. We've still got to, you know, rob the damn thing. Ooh. Don't forget, though, you are carrying a lot of illegal goods right now. Sorry, I almost forgot about the illegal goods. Oh, I have got some good stuff for you, Trade Authority. There we go, the old bank balance is looking a bit better, and uh, yes, indeed. Speaking of, you know, banks and whatnot, this is a moment I've been waiting for, for a very, very long time. All right, you bastards, with your ridiculous, extortionate, indefinite term mortgage. Oh, it's time for some cocky payback. Right, straight downstairs to... Oh. Okay, I may have, like, you know, the passcode to get me into the archives, but, um... The god knows I'm not supposed to be here. Morning, Tim. No trouble. Just here to visit the archives, as I do every day and whatnot. Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> The uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Here you go, good sir. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. All right. He's not screwed me over yet. 
But just, you know, be aware I will be passing you again on the way out, friends. Right, crack open the lovely swishy door. Let's see what we can figure out about, yes, this mysterious... Uh-oh. Oh, cock, cock, cock. I've walked straight into a cocking trap, haven't I? Oh, I've walked straight into a very big trap. Right. Okay, this is... This is fine, just we know where they are. Coachman. There we... I'm just blowing up a chandelier right now. Just the chandelier and... I'm definitely killing someone. We're definitely killing someone. Just don't hit me. There we go. I see your body going flying. Okay, this environment. This works for me. Down you go, buddy. Another one bites the dust. Someone's shooting me, by the way. Oh, I've been hit by a bleeding gun. Right, one basic med pack will do the job. There and then. Just round the corner. And you, sir. You're the executioner. Just pop out. Hit him with everything. Down you go. Right, Tim, me and you need to have a nice chat about the fact you didn't warn me about... You know what, fair enough. Okay, I feel like this is no longer as clean as, like, you know, it was going previously. Which is a bit of a shame, actually. Here we go, just log into the archives of Magnificence. And okay, one useful bit of information... Yeah, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, lose a Galbank ship because all of them have got very, very advanced, you know, uh, transponders installed and whatnot. Which does rather raise the question, uh, how precisely did the Legacy stay lost? Referring to a different ship, not the Legacy, sometimes a transponder gets destroyed. Gotcha. And now we turn our attention to the real target... The legacy herself. So, right, we've got a date, we've got a value so high it's classified, and on top of that, we've got a cocky destination. Okay, Andreja, keep the minigun out. I suspect there might be more trouble waiting outside. So, oh, there's got to be a bounty attached to this. I'm basically robbing a bank at this point. And... All right. Shotgun away. Let's get the cock out of dodge before any more trouble rolls in. Okay, good news. Aside from, you know, one, a very slight exchange of fire at the end. Uh, no trouble whatsoever. Your buddy Rockoff is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. He was actually pretty bloody helpful. Let him back in. Yeah, that'd be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right, now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand. Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Approaching that in. well, in any ship would be suicide. Okay. So that there, that sounds like yes. A good reason why they wouldn't be able to get it back. And in fact, why no one would be able to get it. That feels like, you know, a pretty damn big dead end. Yeah, Rook. Just like every other time we've gone on this worthless treasure hunt. Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. Okay, I'm good at scanning. It's a perk I've taken. Bare minimum, we could, you know, figure out its rough location inside that mess by scanning the transponder. The Rook's right. We tackle one problem at a time. Can we track it, neighbor? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But. Before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. 
All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that comp spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. So, okay. We know where we need to go, but we need to do some prep before we can get there. Marvelous. Let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I going to be very disappointed? Not in the slightest. Here you cock and go. Well, well. Look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call. But that's on you. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, Fleet? We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Right, so there's a giant pile of money. Could have made some more by, yeah, cutting our rope off. But to be honest, he did a good job. But you know what? Having completed this delightful little heist, how about we call it a part there? But next time, okay, I now can't get rid of Andreja until we've done her loyalty mission. So uh, I'd say probably best we go and help her out. So uh, hopefully you join me next time for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Starfield. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.